J. Penn. Chapter 15. I claim this land for the mole rats. Jack spoke in mock grandeur, standing on the beach of this unknown world, surveying his surroundings like an explorer of old. I still can't believe we made it, Trudy exclaimed looking up at the clear blue sky to thank her lucky stars, hugging Brady protectively in her arms. Don't speak too soon, not until everyone is accounted for, Amber replied, and instructed those who had survived to search around the beach until they had checked that everyone was okay, found. Also, to see what could be salvaged, then they would need to make some kind of shelter Splitting up, the survivors spread out around the beach, the waves rhythmically lapping as the tide rolled in, hitting the shore and bringing in all sorts of debris from the Jizheo Lee. All around them, the sandy beachfront was strewn with pieces of metal, plastic bottles, drenched tins of food, many of which spewed out their contents into the ocean, having been damaged, crushed, when the mighty vessel ran aground. Jay stood in the water, knee-deep, wading around to see if they could find anything useful, or if there was a sign of any bodies. The surface of the water must have had thousands of items floating in it, bobbing around, having fallen out of the containers, which had once been on the outer deck of the cargo ship. The Jiteo Lee itself was several hundred metres away, breaking up, its burned-out hull creaking as the tide came in, engulfing the damaged superstructure, gradually shaking loose whole sections of the riveted hull, the occasional loud shriek of screeching metal audible from so far away. What was left of the ship lay on a severe angle, the wreck collapsing into the growing depths of the ocean. The last remaining metal containers it carried tumbling into the waters with a mighty crash like ice falling off a glacier anything ellie you okay amber asked loudly so her voice could be carried from the beach to the lifeboat still out in the water there's nothing more in here no sign ellie shouted back to the shore she and Lex had been checking out the splintered lifeboat they had escaped in, a massive dent on the front from where it had collided with the gigantic rock. A gash was visible in the side of the small vessel, and it was taking in water. The lifeboat was still stuck fast, as it had been when it first struck the rock that held it pinned in its grasp. Ellie and Lex, standing on the rock and leaning into the lifeboat, trying their best to keep their balance. Be careful, Ellie, Jack called out from down the beach, concerned. Then he gazed around for signs of the others. Satisfied that there was no sign of those unaccounted for still trapped in the lifeboat, Lex traversed, leaping from the boat to the rock, joining Ellie, and began swimming to shore. It had been so close, such a lucky escape, and they both hoped all had made it. But they were beginning to have their doubts. Ram sat on the beach, cradling his head in his hands, lost in another world of his own. Ram, are you hurt? Amber wondered, walking among the cluttered assortment of debris, her eyes scanning the beach for any sign of absent friends. Leave me alone, Amber. I'm thinking, Ram grumbled. You can save your thinking till later, once we've found everyone. Why don't you get off your butt and help? 
Start looking around. Fine. If you insist, Ram snapped, getting to his feet, and lashed out petulantly at a pile of shampoo bottles that had washed ashore, kicking them venomously, venting his frustration. Just what was his problem? Amber thought to herself, as Ram waded into the shallow water and began searching through the myriad of items floating around him. Amber shook her head, mystified, as always, by Ram and his behaviour. But now was not the time to be concerned by any of Ram's histrionics. There were lives in danger, missing people to find. May sat further down on the beach, her legs tucked up as she rocked back and forth, crying. Amber crossed to her and sat down beside her to offer some comfort, wrapping an arm round May, her shoulders heaving in emotion. There, everything will be okay, Amber said, doing her best to give some reassurance to help with the hurt May was feeling. Really? May blurted out doubtfully, her eyes welled up, wet with tears. We'll find them, Zack and the others, I promise you. What if he didn't make it? May asked dreading to ask the question. What if he's... Unable to finish, May choked up and buried her head in amber, wailing at the potential loss of her loved one she so painfully expected. Amber hugging her tightly, trying to absorb May's pain. Oh my god! Daryl! Celine called out. Far away from the others, Celine noticed a figure and ran towards it, finally reaching Daryl, his body lying inert, face down on the beach. Concerned, Celine knelt above Daryl, casting her eyes up and down at him, wondering if he was alive. Oh my god, oh my god, she repeated over and over again, hesitating, lost in her fears. Following her instincts, Celine slowly pushed Daryl onto his back. He didn't react. Behind her, Jay and Lex were sprinting along the sandy shore, making their way towards her to lend assistance. Relax, Sal, remember? Celine urged herself, telling herself to keep calm and trying to recall the first aid lesson she had taken at school. Leaning over Daryl, she could hear his heart beating in his chest. So, he was still alive, for now. Opening his mouth to free up the airwaves, Celine gave Daryl the kiss of life, breathing into him, willing him to live. He responded, poking his tongue into her mouth, and she recoiled in amazement. I didn't know you cared, Daryl said, looking up at Celine. She was shocked by the immediate transformation in Daryl's health. Then the truth dawned on her. You were faking it? she asked in disbelief. I saw you heading my way. Thought I'd play possum. I had to do something to get a smooch from you. You'll get a punch in the mouth, Celine retorted angrily, and she began to hit Daryl, furious at his deception, as he shielded himself, yelping out. Easy. That's a weird form of life-saving. Sal, it won't work. You look like you're going to kill him, Lex said, out of breath. As he and Jay arrived, the two of them stunned at seeing Celine pounding Daryl. He deserves it, idiot! Celine shrieked, and with one more hit, she stormed away, heading to another section of the beach. Women, eh? Daryl sighed despondently to Lex and Jay as they helped him to his feet. I can never figure them out. About another hundred metres ahead, Ruby and Lottie gazed around, examining the beach for any glimpse of the missing others. Ruby! Lottie shrieked, suddenly noticing someone, and pointed ahead. Racing over, as Ruby and Lottie neared the figure, they identified Slade, laying still on his side. A gash on his head, dried blood caked on the wound. Ruby and Lottie's expressions were full of concern as they crouched behind him. 
Hello, Ruby. Slade whispered casually. Ruby grinned in delight that Slade had survived. How'd you know it was me? I can smell your perfume. You're alive! Lottie shrieked, thrilled. Either that, or this is some afterlife. Are you hurt? Ruby asked, examining Slade's body. I'm okay. Don't worry. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Lottie replied. Stepping over him to get to his other side for another look, Ruby suddenly put her hand to her mouth, gasping as she too noticed what Lottie had seen. Slade's right hand was covering a gaping wound in his side, a jagged piece of metal sticking in his stomach. Below his left rib cage, blood oozing through his shirt, flowing through his fingers. Lottie could hardly bear to look at the sickening wound and turned away. It's that bad, huh? Slade wondered, groaning at the pain. Holding back the tears, Ruby's silence told Slade everything, confirming the worst fears he suspected about the extent of his injury. Of all the places we could have ended up, trust us to find one without any hotels, Jail complained, dropping palm leaves onto a pile, gradually getting bigger. She had been deployed, along with Trudy and Sammy, to gather some leaves to build a makeshift shelter. What's the matter? You missing your hair conditioner? Shampoo? Sammy scoffed, adding some palms of his own to the collection. The Brady beside him, throwing her own small bundle on top. Stop thinking about yourself for once, Jell, and get your priorities straight, Trudy said. I was only talking, Jell mumbled. Exactly. Try thinking as well, for once, Trudy snapped. Jell stuck her tongue out at Trudy, making a face behind her back. Noticing, little Brady retaliated, poking her own tongue out at Jell, sticking up for her mother, as Sammy cast a glance at heaven.